Welcome back to the Joe Miller Show, KOA and Hot Talk, 1080 AM, 95.1 FM. This show is made possible by the MacPherson Tax Defense Group, serving Alaskans and Americans since 1978 with two generations of tax defense attorneys, 1-800-BEAT-IRS or BEATIRS.com. That's B-E-A-T-I-R-S. We're honored to have with us Admiral James Ace Lyons, U.S. Navy retired. He's the president of... CEO of Lion Associates LLC, a premier global consultancy providing technical expertise in the areas of international marketing and trade and many other areas. Of course, most of you know he was the former commander-in-chief of the U.S. Pacific Fleet, the largest single military command in the world. His initiatives contributed directly to the economic stability and humanitarian understanding of the Pacific and Indian Ocean regions. He also was the deputy chief of naval operations from 83 to 85, principal advisor in all Joint Chiefs of Staff matters, and was the father of the Navy Red Cell, an anti-terrorism group comprised of Navy SEALs. Many, many accolades. Of course, an expert in foreign affairs, Admiral Lyons. Thanks so much for being back on the Joe Miller Show. It's nice to be back with you, Joe, and your audience. Well, you wrote uh, recently an article about uh, the Iran deal, obviously bad deal, but, but you said something that was a bit shocking to some suggesting that U.S. acquiescence to that deal was no mistake. Tell us a little bit about why the deal is so bad and then why the Obama administration did what it did. Well, uh, every objective that we set out for ourselves uh, to accomplish and having Iran um, take down its nuclear infrastructure, we conceded on every one. And in fact, we actually went beyond uh, what our objectives were. I mean, you understand, we've obligated ourselves to provide security for Iran's nuclear infrastructure, not only against terrorist attacks. Of course, Iran is being the foremost state sponsor of terrorism throughout the world, but we are now obligated to provide Uh, protection uh, for their nuclear infrastructure sites and also to teach them how to prevent sabotage to these sites. This is is beyond the pale. This is, I mean, uh, what... So the the sabotage protection, we're talking about, like, for example, protecting against the computer virus that created problems several years ago. Uh, and, and, and we're also talking about providing security against potential hostility from Israel. Is that correct? Exactly. You're right on the mark, Joe. So is, is this part of one of the side deals that wasn't disclosed to Congress, or is this right in the, the, the information that's publicly available on the deal? We don't even know exactly what's in the side deals. Nobody's seen it. And, of course, you know, as I said in that op-ed, uh, this, none of this, your listeners should understand, none of this is due to in, incompetence or the inability on how to negotiate. I mean, they traded our national honor here, our honor that hundreds of thousands of fine Americans paid the ultimate price to protect. And it's unconscionable what they did. And, of course, I said, uh, this really goes back to 2008, when President Obama was candidate Obama. He opened up, when he received the uh, Democratic Party nomination for the presidency of the United States, he opened up a secret channel to the Iranian theocracy. And that secret channel was Ambassador William G. Mellon who was our former ambassador to the Ukraine. But more importantly, he had previously served in our embassy in Tehran and spoke fluent Farsi. And the message that he was delivering to the Iranian mullahs was, don't sign an agreement with the Bush administration. Wait until I'm president. You will get a much better deal. You will see. You will like my policies. I am your friend. This is unconscionable. Here is a country that has caused the loss of thousands of American lives 
and your listeners should never forget that the 9-11 terrorist attack, those terrorists were provided the key material and training support by Iran. And without that support, that attack could not have been carried out, and 3,000 innocent Americans who were doing nothing more than going to work would be alive today. And this president is telling them he's their friend. This is incredible. It borders on treason and certainly is a violation of the Logan Act. And the Logan Act says no private person can interfere with official diplomatic negotiations. Well, I got to tell you, I mean, Congress needs to get off its butt and do something about this. I mean, that's where the leverage needs to be applied to this guy. But, you know, getting back to the initial discussions with Iran, uh, it was just recently disclosed, and this kind of uh, falls into line with what you were describing about the earlier negotiations. It was actually a menajad that was part of the initial negotiation with the Obama administration, correct? Correct. Because uh, our congressional leadership has not lived up to their oath of office. And really, the Supreme Court of the United States also have not lived up to their oath of office. By both of these organizations, they are complicit with President Obama's illegal and unconstitutional acts. I mean, Andy McCarthy, in his uh, book, uh, Faithless Execution, laid out the impeachment case against Obama very clearly, eight specific articles, and he was shunned, more than shunned by our Republican leadership in Congress. He was chastised. This should tell you everything you need to know. So, Admiral Lyons, why are the Supreme Court and Congress complicit in this? I mean, what what is the pressure that's being applied (laughs) to the few patriots that are at least in Congress that's causing them not to speak out and do what needs to be done? Well, um, uh, uh, I don't know what it was with uh, Chief Justice Roberts when he made that ridiculous Obamacare should have been declared unconstitutional, and he turned out to be a legislator. We had the Supreme Court of the United States acting as a legislative body. This is nonsense. That's not their job. And the same way with um, Congress, the leadership in Congress. Part of the problem there, I see that leadership, they're part of the uh, gang of eight that were uh, told about our illegal actions that went on in Libya and caused the Benghazi fiasco. They, They knew... In my view, they were explicitly told and agreed to switching sides on the uh, global war on terror, where we then started to provide military equipment and support to al-Qaeda militias as well as uh, Muslim Brotherhood-controlled militias. This is some of the things. I mean, what you've got in Washington today is a criminal organization that plays by the Chicago ground rules. Coming up on a break, we're going to talk more about this and also the transgendered changes in the military. Of course, there were just a couple, I guess, female rangers who graduated from ranger school, the conversion of the military into a different institution under the Obama administration. Admiral Lyons has some strong views on that. Stay with us. The Joe Miller Show back after this news. Welcome back to the Joe Miller Show, KON Hot Talk, 1080 AM, 95.1 FM. We have with us Admiral James Ace Lyons, Jr., generously is sharing his time with us for another segment. He was an officer in the U.S. Navy for 36 years, most recently as the Commander-in-Chief of the U.S. Pacific Fleet, the largest single military command in the world, very active and involved in security issues since then. He is now currently the President and CEO of Lion Associates, LLC, a premier global consultancy providing technical expertise in the areas of international marketing and trade, enterprise risk, anti-terrorism site and port security, 
foreign policy and security affairs, along with defense and commercial procurement. Admiral Lyons, thank you for staying with us. I appreciate you sharing with our audience the concerns that you have for the future of this country. It's my pleasure, Joe. So one of the things that we were talking about during the break, uh, there was at the time that uh, Obama trying to push forward his Iran deal, a number of flag officers that indicated their support for that. And I think you mentioned 36 flag officers. What in the world's going on with that? I mean, it's obviously patently apparent to anybody that knows national security, this is a bad deal. How can you get that many people signing on to it? Uh, you know, you've, you've heard the term political correctness. And uh, that it gives you an idea how deeply it is infected our military leadership. And uh, it's uh, really distressing to me uh, that any responsible uh, military officer would stand up and support this clearly flawed arrangement with Iran. I mean, let's face it, Iran's been at war with the United States for almost 36 years. They've caused the the loss of thousands of American lives, and as I said in the last segment, uh, they were the key provider for the 9-11 attack uh, that cost the lives of 3,000 innocent Americans. And, of course, when uh, President Obama says, well, you either sign this agreement, it's war, uh, and perhaps he, he liked to be informed, he should be informed, that Iran's been at war with us for over 35 years, and over one-third of our casualties in Iraq are the direct result of Iran. You at one time were the advisor to the Joint Chiefs of Staff on security matters. Uh, you're right. I guess it was as the Deputy Chief of Naval Operations. If you were currently serving in that status today and you saw what was going down with the Obama administration, now, of course, military, I mean, you've got to obviously obey direct orders, et cetera, but what would you do if you were in that position today to try to stop the deal? Well, what, you know, this is the most distressing part to me, that the Joint Chiefs of Staff, you know, they don't realize when they stand up as a corporate body and tell the President of the United States, we're not going to support that policy, it is wrong for the country, it's wrong for the military, and if you insist on going through with it, you have our resignation. We must live up to our oath of office. And regretfully, not one of them has stood up and been counted. So what what has changed? Why are people just rolling over on this stuff, even though they know in their heart of hearts what's going on is wrong? It, it didn't just start with the Obama administration. It, uh, there's been a culture that's been developed. You, I've seen it uh, when I was on active duty. Uh, people are picked for key positions not on their professional capabilities, but more on the you know, fact that they can be managed. You know, uh, it's, uh, it's a terrible thing to say, but certainly when we're dealing with people's lives and the security of this country, but it's a fact of life. Well, it's shocking, and, and of course, as a result of that, now we have stuff like transgendered in the military, and that's something you've got some strong feelings on. What's going on, first of all, and how's that going to impact national security? Well, here's the whole thing. You know, as I said in a number of op-eds, Joe, when you want to take a country down, the first thing you do is you undercut the military. And that's why sequestration was the perfect storm for the Obama administration. And these grand, draconian um, budget cuts, over a trillion dollars over a 10-year period. And while the Defense Department represents 20% of the federal budget, they were required to eat 50% of those budget cuts. Unheard of. So that's what's happening now where you have the unilateral disarmament of our military. Sequestration was the perfect storm for the Obama administration. And, what, and that's why we're going to wind up with the smallest army since prior to World War II, the smallest navy prior to World War I, uh, the Air Force, the smallest in its history, and, uh, and, and this goes to all of the services, roughly uh, they're down 50% in readiness. And, of course, compounding all of this is the social engineering that has been forced on the military. Uh, you know, there are many, in my view, 
There are many viable roles for women in, in the military. Combat is not one of them. And, you know, this, uh, where we've, we're addressing now uh, uh, the transgender issue, and the Secretary of Defense, Ash Carter, has set up new regulations to incorporate and accommodate uh, uh, the, the transgender issue. Well, this is nonsense. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Paul McHugh, who was the head psychologist at John Hopkins University, had it exactly right. He said, look, these people need understanding and help. This is a mental disorder. This is not a civil right as it's now being t trying to be portrayed, they need psychological help where they can return and live a normal, capable life. And, you know, there's a, in Sweden, you have a large uh, transgender uh, society there, and uh, they did a study of 350 of them that went through the full transition. And the suicide rate was over 20 times that of the non-transgender society. Certainly we, we, our military should not have to be put in a position to have to deal with this uh, mental disorder. We had Walt Heyer on this program who actually went through a sex change surgery and then tried to reverse it the best he could. And he studied this uh, to some detail and confirms what you're telling our audience. 41% of those who undergo a sex change surgery attempt suicide, 41%. And yet we're going to sit back and, and celebrate this. I mean, obviously put our nation at risk by then integrating it into the services. Now, one of the things that just recently came out in the news a couple of days ago, uh, apparently the Rangers have graduated their first new women graduates and found it interesting. Apparently Obama announced he was going to the graduation ceremony. Do you think that pretty much assured that those women were going to make it through? No question about it, Joe. Of course, I want to find out who invited the president. I wouldn't have invited him. We might have had a different outcome. Oh, you don't think he insisted on being present? <laughs> he probably did. And I'm just joking. <laughs> There's no way to keep him out of there. He still is oh, commander-in-chief, and yeah. he goes where but, he wants. We're putting our men uh, lives on the line. It, this is no... The people that are forcing this social engineering on our military, I guarantee you, None of them have ever served in the military, and most likely none of them have set foot on a military base, a ship, an aircraft carrier, or an air station. The scary thing about this, too, is, you know, as the public sees this happening, you know, typically military personnel have been selected out of kind of the conservative segment of culture of society. And I've already heard from a number of youth that I've talked with that they don't have any interest now joining the military, given what's going on with respect to not just the transgender community, but also with respect to, you know, the don't ask, don't tell being repealed. Yeah, this is exactly right, uh, Joe. You know, the Navy back in the 1880s, 1890s had a, a serious um, um, uh, problem with um, homosexuality and to the point where mothers would not let their sons enlist in the Navy. And the Navy finally moved to take action. What's disturbing to me today is none of our military leadership have stood up and been counted. They've all been compromised, politically correct. And by them not living up to their oath of office, they are complicit with President Obama's illegal and unconstitutional acts. And they must be held accountable just like our civilian uh, leadership in Congress and the Supreme Court. This cannot allow to be stand without taking appropriate action. Admiral Lyons, I appreciate the efforts you're making to hold them accountable. We'll continue to get your good word out. Thanks for being back on the Joe Miller Show and helping us understand what's going on. All right, Joe, remember, beat Army. <laughs> Beat Navy, Admiral. <laughs> Stay with us in Joe Miller's show. Rachel Alexander coming up next.